You know, I saw one trailer for this bad boy, and when I see Nicolas Cage, a national treasure if I ever saw one, when I see him and his look is Dracula and he's living out his dream, I was like, I need to go to the theater, I need to support this man, let's do this. Renfield is directed by Chris McKay, who brought you the Lego Batman movie, which is an incredibly fun movie in its own right. And it stars Nicholas Holt, Nicholas Cage, and Aquafina. Nicholas Cage, of course, is playing Count Dracula. Nicholas Holt is playing his assistant, Renfield. So as the Count's assistant, Renfield is forced to procure his master's prey and do his every dirty bidding. But after centuries of servitude, he's ready to see if there's a life outside the shadow of the Prince of Darkness. So let me get this straight. You have an original character from the 1931 classic, and you not only modernize that relationship, but this assistant is going through an existential crisis. And he's also granted the power anytime he eats a little insect and he goes super scion in the clutch and becomes a badass. That's a really cool idea. And I gotta praise Renfield for its originality and just going balls to the wall with this idea. And when you see Nicholas Holt and Nicholas Cage together as it's advertised in the trailers, it really freaking works. I think these two share a magnificent dynamic. Nicholas Holt gives such a deceptively badass performance. Because he comes across extremely earnest. But then when he needs to start mowing people down to get his way. When he needs to start mowing people down to serve his master. Oh my god. I love how I've just been following this guy's career ever since I saw him in Fury Road. And I'm just so, so happy for this guy. Still getting big roles like this. The menu from last year. He's killing it, and I can't wait to see what else he does. But I'll give you one wild guess as to what my favorite part of this movie is. Take a wild guess! You probably would never be able to figure it out. But joking aside, Nicolas Cage has been killing it these last couple of years with movies like Pig, Willy's Wonderland, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. The dude's on a roll. And now here he is playing a dream role, which I can certainly, certainly relate to. And I love how he is capturing the spirit of Bella Lugosi and keeping that alive, but he is still managing to make such an iconic character come into his own. Like, you cannot go without praising Nicolas Cage in this movie and what he's able to do. Because he makes himself stand out. A lot of performers play Dracula. Bella Lugosi is untouchable. But Nicolas Cage, again, manages to make it his own unique standout performance. If you go and see Renfield in the theater, just go ahead, every single scene you see Nicolas Cage in, watch what he's doing here. Because it is a very over-the-top Nicolas Cage performance. Not only that, but his inflections, his eye movements, his body movements, everything he's putting into the count here. It is astounding the effort he's giving this movie. And it's very clear that this guy did his homework. Nicolas Cage... Again, living legend, I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. I love this performance. I could gush about Nicolas Cage for hours and hours and hours, but that gets me into my negatives, guys. He's only in the movie for about a third of it. We'd be lucky if we saw Nicolas Cage for half of it, which I get it. The movie's not called Dracula. It's called Renfield, and I really dug what Nicholas Holt was doing. But here's the big reason why I think Renfield just may be the most disappointing movie of the entire year. Because let's face it, the concept of this movie is pure genius. I love the fact that you can go to a movie theater, a big budget studio like this puts it together, and you can just feel that there's nothing like Renfield. But the movie figuratively and literally shoots itself in the foot. That's because this story is unfortunately so freaking disjointed. Because if you really think about it, if you look at the synopsis, if you think about the central relationship of this movie and what it's trying to accomplish, all due respect to Aquafina, I love her and she's hilarious in the movie, but does she really need to be in it? She's probably the only other side character that's new that's introduced here. She's given a massive amount of development with her sister and her background in being a police officer in New Orleans. She's very likable and she is very funny in this movie as she usually is. So I'm willing to give Aquafina a pass, but did we really need all these drug lords in here? Did we really need the Lobo family? It feels like the screenwriter is going to be the only fan of these characters. Because this movie spends a lot of time with these Lobos here. Now, here's the thing. The first act, 
It feels like there's a perfect write-off for these guys. It's a really badass action sequence. They are put down decisively in a tremendous effort. But then they just keep coming back for more. And coming back for more. And coming back for more. We're introduced to the motherly lord of this family. And I'm just like, I thought we were done with you guys. This is a movie where you have the lord of darkness, Dracula himself. Why do we need more villains? And I love Ben Schwartz to death. I love what he does in both Sonic movies. I really do. But it, it is very apparent to me that he is going as over the top as possible with this performance. And it, it just, like, it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. I thought he was super distracting. Like, if you're gonna go into a movie that stars Nicolas Cage, the lord of over the top, you cannot expect yourself to be more over the top than the master. And I don't know if that was a direction flaw or a performance or a communication issue or what have you. But I just found his performance super annoying. Speaking of annoying, oh my god, let's talk about these action sequences. So, there's a lot of hard work that's going into this. The choreography and everything like that, super freaking dope. And the fact that limbs are getting torn off, they're actually being used as weapons everywhere. These are really inventive action sequences. And they are gory as all hell. This is definitely, uh, yeah, definitely rated R. But it's almost like the movie does have some practical effects. There's one scene where you see Nicolas Cage as Dracula being burnt to a crisp and he's talking to Nicholas Holt. Which is freaking awesome! More practical makeup like that, please! Because if you're going to go practical like that, go all out. Go evil dead on our asses. But instead... You get CGI blood, it's not practical whatsoever, and I'm sorry, it came off extremely B-rate to me. You want to talk about distracting? You're watching some awesome action sequences, which, by the way, I should note, a lot of shaky cam in here. There's a lot going on, but you definitely could have used a lot more wide shots. But golly, it feels like most of the time, 95% of the time when they needed some blood in there... It just looked all so fake. I couldn't believe it because it seems like a lot of money went into this bad boy. You get the big names thrown in there to star. And man, yeah, those action sequences, the over-focus on the Lobo drug lord family, this is just all really bugging me because, like, again, with what you advertise, Nicolas Cage and Nicolas Holt as Dracula and Renfield... Renfield going through an existential crisis. I love the originality of it all. That's why it's all the more frustrating to me that I have this many problems with Renfield. I should have walked out of here loving it. And at 93 minutes, it's certainly a very easy watch. You can certainly be entertained by a lot of this. You'll certainly find yourself laughing at good portions of the movie, which I was. But man, I just feel like this movie could have been so much more, if not for those mishaps. I'm gonna give Renfield a C+. If nothing else, go see this for the performances of our three leads. And see it for the scenes between Nicholas Holt and Nicholas Cage, because those are just absolutely glorious. Leads to a finale that is freaking morbid, the more and more you think about it. You just gotta slog through a lot of nonsense to get there, unfortunately. But have you guys seen Renfield? Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments section below what is your favorite all-time dracula style movie what's your favorite vampire movie lots of things we can discuss and so much more guys all down there in the comments i love making these videos i love discussing all things movies Getting to interact with you guys makes it all the more fun. And hey, if you're a new viewer, smash that subscribe button and click on that like as well. Really, really helps with the algorithm. Helps get this content out there to more lovely viewers like you. Only helps to continue to grow this awesome community of film lovers and entertainment lovers everywhere. Y'all are the best. Stay tuned for more exciting videos very soon. And with all that being said, Back Talk, commence!